हेलो 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 मैम मैम वी आर एबल टू हियर यू यू कैन स्टार्ट एबल टू हियर यू स्टार्ट good evening all so welcome to this session of rising stars to sir ena speaker is professor munji kammi dan tell it continue tell it continue so ma'am please don't worry continue okay so ha huh. good evening everyone welcome to this session of rising stars today's speaker is ms talab devnar presently she is assistant professor in department of chemistry at iit durki she obtained her phd from iic bangalore in 2006 which was based on analytically tractable models relevant to biological problems within the broad area of polymer physics of professor m g guenja she joined max planck institute of colloid and interfaces germany as humboldt's research fellow to on single polymer friction since 2011 she is serving in iit roorkee as assistant professor in today she will discuss analytic theory in polymers within the realm of statistical mechanics so now i will request professor pallavi devnar to start the lecture जस्टिन थॉमस एड एच टू स्पीक ऑन दिस सीरीज Can I start sharing my slides? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, today uh, I'll be speaking on theoretical work in polymers. So this is a brief outline of my talk. I'll be first uh, uh, speaking about chain statistics, um, which has more to do with analytic theory. Uh, then I'll go into chain dynamics. and then all this will be pertaining to the work uh, that i have uh, which i will be presenting next and then i'll summarize so before i speak about my work it's a brief uh, uh, introduction to what we do in analytic theory so first i start with polymer conformations so polymers as we know they are compounds they are formed by uh, repeating units okay which repeating units can be a group of atoms uh, or chains having side branch uh, having uh, which yeah into long chains or chains uh, having side branches and into special net network as well today i'll be focusing only on the long chains to illustrate the analytic theory uh, the number of repeat units is the degree of polymerization so first i take the simplest example of a linear a uh, chain alkyl which is a polyethylene uh, the repeat unit is ch2 uh, okay so you all know we have studied uh, uh, in school uh, about in the stereochemistry classes that uh, 
uh, sp3 hybridized carbon uh, where the carbon carbon link can be in any of the three conformations so one is trans another is gauche the two gauche forms are mirror images of each other so they are energetically these gauche forms are, uh, are energetically at the same level trans is the most stable form now there are two energy scales one is the uh, energy difference between the minima which is delta small epsilon another is delta it is energy barrier separating them so one is related to static flexibility and the other is related to the dynamic flexibility okay so uh, let's first talk about the stat static flexibility it defines the lens scale so the persistence length is one of the important uh, length scale which uh, determines the global flexibility of the chain uh, where x is the dimensionless persistence length is equal to the persistence length uh, over the contour length of the chain that is the total length of the chain exponent and exponential delta epsilon by kbt now this holds at least true for the polyethylene delta epsilon is greater than co now when we ignore details smaller than a certain characteristic length uh, you will find the chain more more or less like a coil now if you zoom a portion of the chain you will find a chain of trans conformations okay these are trans sequences and then there will be gauge sequences now if the delta epsilon is k less than k then you will have relative weight of gauge and trans conformation is of order unity so the chain is not fully stretched and it will be more or less like a random coil but if for slight values of this there will be much more preferences for trans conformation as you see here then the chain is locally rigid but then there is always a length scale where uh, which is large enough and it will again appear as a as a flexible coil so uh, so we are talking about so i'll be focusing basically what we do uh, the theory that i do is on a larger length scale and all analytic theory is basically done in this where we don't care much about the details of the chemical bonds and this at a shorter length scale next for completeness i have included the dynamic flexibility which has to do with the time required for a transition between trans and gauche states okay so tau p is the uh, is the persistence time it is a time required for uh, transition from this and it depends on the delta e that is the barrier between these two states now if if this is in the range of the thermal energy the barrier is not important and the transition of the isomerization takes place in the time scale of 10 to the power very fast okay this is a very fast we say that the chain is dynamically flexible there may be molecules which are flexible from a static point of view but which have high barriers now like which has steric uh, roots in the backbone now the situation corresponds to a random coil which is which is essentially frozen in a uh, in one conformation like a piece of twisted pair and a molecule of this type in dilute solution would be uh, a single chain glass and should have some remarkable uh, mechanical properties now after talking about the length scales and the time scales i now go to the configuration statics of the uh, of polymers now for the simplest case of polyethylene uh, which has n plus 1 as uh, monomers or the repeat units and the successive carbon carbon rings can be in one of the two states trans or gauche now uh, you can have two rays to the power different conformations for a n link chain provided this number is if the links are independent okay and uh, uh, don't go by the humble uh, two Uh, this is a very huge number in case n is large now these conformations are often referred to as polymer conformations when we do the statics uh, of a polymers further the potentials we have the potentials uh, okay which is uh, then the potentials of free rotation and also the uh, dihedral rotation uh, which is determined by the steric interaction between nearby bonds and one can calculate the probability of a particular chain conformation a particular chain conformation is determined by uh, this uh, by this notation which is uh, where rk is basically the position vectors of all the n plus 1 elements of the repeat units which we uh, we'll just term it as monomers 
Now here the origin is at the R zero. As long as as long as we are not applying force to the polymer, uh, you can one can conveniently take the origin at the uh, zeroth element. Okay, so these are the position vectors with respect to the origin. The squiggles refer to the uh, uh, carbon carbon links which we haven't uh, drawn here. Okay, so it's a long chain. The, the schematic presentation which I have drawn. Now, once we have the uh, uh, we have defined a model for the polymer. Okay, we have defined all the potentials. Then I can write this, which is a function of the of the configuration, and that is the sum of all the uh, chain connectivities. And you see, chain connectivities because R this R not is connected to R one by the carbon carbon link. <clears throat> Suppose for poly, for polyethylene, it's a carbon carbon single bond link, and so on. Okay, so uh, so that is the chain connectivity. It's just the fact that the monomers are Connected to form a long chain. Okay, that's a connectivity. And then you have all other interactions, that is, uh, long range, short range interactions, and so on. All other. I'll talk briefly about this. Okay, so this chain connectivity is expressed in terms of the bond product. This tau ri. Now, what is this ri? Ri is the bond vector. Okay, so it is. Ri minus Ri minus one, so it has a direction in this. Okay, it's a bond vector. Okay, it's e raised to the power minus beta u i Ri. Now, if the bond, uh, if the bond probability depends just on the Ri, that is the bond vector, then uh, this u i is uh, it just depends on the difference of this Ri and Ri minus one. That makes the mathematics a lot more convenient. Uh, once the potential energy is determined, so we have determined an energy of a particular configuration at a fixed temperature. So that rings a bell for students out there. So it's a canonical ensemble I'm talking about. So I can write a canonical partial function. So you, so each of these energy energy configurations, uh, energy, and uh, instead of labeling the energy that we do that I did it in class, it's uh, basically a function of the configuration. So when you write the partition function, you integrate over the all the conformations or the configurations of the chain. Okay, G is nothing but this exponential of this potential energy. Okay, and D R K obviously, if R K is uh, is represented by all the position coordinates of the chain, so D R K is uh, this is a notation. Just it is D R one, D R two, D R n. We don't have D R zero because we have taken we have fixed the origin. Okay. I zero is fixed at now. So once the partition function, this uh, partition function is uh, very important in uh, statistical mechanics. So once you have fixed the partition function and you have the potential energy, you can get, write the probability distribution function, which is just this exponential term divided by this. Once you have these things defined, then what is this? D P R K D R K is the Probability that the segment lies between the configurations R k and R k plus D r. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the differential amount. So this is the while this is the probability distribution function. It is a small detail which helps in doing uh, getting the things right and dimensions right. Now here we didn't mention about the what is the model of the chain that we can so. Uh, as long as we deal with flexible polymers, so uh, then that means all the energetic interactions, all the other interactions except the chain connectivity is R0. So uh, one model that fits into it is a random flat chain. Now, this picture is taken from this book, Winston Colby, and here it's of a 50 step random. Model. So random work is one of the most simplest. You know, if I have to explain, so this is the, uh, this is a carbon-carbon is -carbon three hybridized link where this uh, where this angle is 109.5 degrees. As you all know, that is a simple tetrahedral angle. Okay, so in a random flight chain, this theta can assume all the values from zero to pi, and also there is no uh, the rotation about single uh, about the CC link is free. So it is 
uh, and testicle. So this is also called the freely jointed chain. Uh, now, how you do, how you go further from this to derive the partition function that we discussed in the last slide, it's obtained from the Markov's methods of random variables. Now, you can obtain by taking this bond probability either as a delta function that is a fix the bond length with all other normalization factors or is a Gaussian, okay? Uh, it's a Gaussian, Gaussian has this square dependence on the distance. Now, if you do all this, then you get uh, the probability of the end to end distance is Gaussian, then the second order moment is R square is an L square and this scales as a, as a degree of polymerization or the contour. Okay, here N is the degree of polymerization, L is the bond then because it's a random flight chain. So there is no bond angle, all the angles uh, it can be possible. So it's a fully extended uh, the chain length that fully at full extension. Okay, so now, now we come to the concept of equivalent Gaussian chain. So we consider flexible polymer chains, which is composed of equivalent Gaussian links. Now, what is the equivalent Gaussian links? Uh, how do you get? You, get, you take a real chain with particular mean square end to end distance, R square. Okay, now, then you define a parameter L, which is R square over N. N is the maximum contour length at full extension. Then you take equivalent uh, chain, which is composed of Gaussian links, where, which is n links with average root mean square size of delta s, such so that n delta s is the same n as the contour length, and the r square is same as that defined by this, where r square is same as that of the real chain. Okay. So these all, uh, once it satisfies this, okay, um, and it's it's nothing but a coupled harmonic oscillator. Now the bond probability is Gaussian. Okay, L is the effective bond length, you can say. Okay, uh, delta S we already defined. So, this is a Gaussian bond probability. Now, probability of entire chain configuration is this, and this uh, and this turns out, the pro uh, this is a probability, this is a probability distribution, and this turns out to be the, uh, as a product of all the bond probabilities times the differential BRI. Okay, and this is obtained, the limit, when you take all the Ws, all other interactions to be C. Here also, you have fixed origin at R0. Okay. These are, these are all the Rs are the same. Okay. Now, we discuss the continuum limit. So, this quantity is for a discrete chain. This. Now, in the continuum limit, if I have to go to the continuum, so what I do? The delta S, that is the, that is a segment, RMS length tends to zero, N tends to infinity, this degree of polymerization tends to infinity, but then the contour length is finite, okay? This is also called the uh, FI limit, uh, which we denote as FI limit. And in this, this quantity turns out to be PRS delta S. This is basically uh, comes from the functional, uh, uh, differential of this path del rs okay uh, within the functional derivative uh, okay. so and this is what it becomes drs is a, this now this n is the calligraphic n is the normalization constant times this delta rs okay now we don't uh, normally we don't end up calculating this because there is uh, uh, this is obtained uh, by whatever the partition function that you get or the probability that you get uh, it's automatically calculated by uh, fixing the condition that the probability is normalized. Okay. Now, this is the functional. It is to the power minus 3 by 2 by integral of S to the R dot square. This is the time derivative. This is the uh, del R by del S whole square ds. So, this whole thing is the functional. Also called, and this whole quantity on the left hand side is also called the one dimension. So basically, we transport the, after taking all these limits, you go to the continuum, you get a continuous equivalent random flight chain. Now, what is that? Uh, here, it's a continuous curve, Rs, where S runs from 0 to N. And Rs is the position vector, and you fix the origin 
Uh, here also you can conveniently fix the origin at s equal to zero. Uh, R zero can be taken to be zero as long as we don't apply force at the ends. Okay, if there is no external force in the field, uh, external force right to the origin. Now this quantity, this was, uh, now this probability got to be normalized. So when you, when you uh, integrate this distribution function over all the configurations, it should be one. So this means the probability that the chain has any configuration is uh, the SI limit, it turns out to be this. And this whole quantity obviously you have to integrate over this, over the, all the configurations is called the functional integral. Okay, where the integration is over all continuous curves, S going from zero to n such that R zero equal to zero. R zero equal to zero. Now, what are the interactions that we do? Obviously, that would have excluded any exact treatment. By the way, this is exactly solvable. Okay, it gives uh, if you have to calculate the distribution of equivalent distance from this functional integral. Okay. Uh, uh, from this minor measure, uh, it's a Gaussian. Now, which you also get from the freely jointed chain. Now, if you, the challenges or the interactions that we have not included are the energetic interactions. Now, how do they live? They are this long range excluded volume interactions, uh, which just means that the two different constituent uh, portions of the chain, okay, they don't occupy the same region of space. Okay. For excluded volume, this interaction is recursive. Now, if the polymer has to collapse, for a collapsing polymer, these interactions are attractive. Uh, this picture is taken from Bill Edwards' book. Uh, and this is a schematic of a hydrodynamic interaction, the interactions which is mediated by the solvent. A force acting on a particle M creates a, this is a particle M, it creates a velocity field. Okay. Is a force acting, it creates a velocity field which is uh, that acts on other particles, on the surrounding particles, and this uh, this uh, interaction is mediated by the solvent that is called the hydrodynamic interaction. Okay, and this uh, represents a interacting monomers of a polymer chain. Okay, uh, uh, the modeling this is of course very complicated, but, and that excludes any exact treatment. So, but we have well studied approximations do exist and it goes beyond the scope of this talk. Uh, Rouse model. So Rouse model is, it describes the dynamics of these kind of flexible polymers with localized interactions. Okay, now what is the Rouse model? It is comprised of a set of beads which is connected along a chain by harmonic space. We already talked about it is a equivalent Gaussian chains. Okay, uh, so our Rouse dynamics is the dynamics of a, this uh, Brownian motion of this connected beads. Okay, with all the excluded volume and the hydrodynamic interactions completely disregarded, and this models the uh, dynamics of a polymer in dilute solutions. Now it is expressed as a evolution of a distribution function, namely the Smoluchowski equation or a chain position coordinate. We will be discussing the chain position coordinate over time, which is also known as the Langevin equation. In continuum limit, this equation looks like this. So this is the frictional term, and this is the coming from the potential, the, the connectivity uh, force from the chain connectivity, and this is the random force. This, this and this are added. This can also be obtained as a Lagrange equation of motion, by uh, within the by minimizing the action within path integral time. Uh, now, our, this is uh, written as a one D equation where gamma can be x, y, or c uh, with free and boundary conditions. Uh, free and boundary conditions. Why it is free and because uh, there is no continuity of the chain beyond tau equal to zero and beyond tau equal to n. So it has to satisfy these are the boundary conditions that fixes or uh, that stops the chain, that stops this function going beyond these limits. Okay. Uh, and the random force is a white noise, which is delta function correlated, and it is defined in this way. Uh, the quantity here you can identify as a beat diffusion coefficient, which has an extra uh, 
the dimension of length uh, and uh, the d is kvt by uh, by theta theta is the friction coefficient um, in doe edwards uh, the continuum variable here the continuum variable has dimension of length in while in doe edwards is the uh, is dimension length. so that's the only difference that i have but you can always look at our paper it's done all these nitty gritties are worked out. Now, Rouse, how to solve this? Um, uh, here, before ever thinking of solving it, you have an extra variable tau. Okay, uh, you have to decouple this tau and t. And this is done within normal mode analysis. So, normal mode analysis, what are normal modes? They describe the independent collective motions of a mini body system. Uh, so, uh, zero, where the zeroth mode is always the center of mass mode, describing the translational degree of freedom. First mode is rotational. The three, you can always have the vibrational modes uh, pertain to the higher modes. So basically, uh, how you define that? One by n, zero, uh, xp is defined in this way. This is one over the continuum, integral of zero to n, the cosine function, r tau. Now, why you get the cosines? Because uh, this cosine satisfies the uh, boundary conditions and also the differential equation. Okay, uh, for all t equal to zero, one, two, and so on. Now, so in such a way that r tau t is expressed as a linear expansion in this in this cosines. Okay, so x p. Basically, if you uh, want to understand this, x p represents the local motion of the chain, which includes approximately n by p segments and correspond to the motion with one scale of the order n p by p raised to the power. Uh, so, where the evolution equation of each of these normal modes is given by this. These are again this stochastic equation. Uh, f p is, f p is again has, uh, f p is basically again the mode contribution of the Total random force that you have. Okay, it again comes from here. Okay, there again delta function correlated. Now, this quantity now here is the mode diffusivity. And xi0 is n epsilon, is twice n epsilon. Now, here you see in the original Rouse model, all the uh, mode friction coefficients greater than one, they are the same. Okay, and they are related to the zero mode friction coefficient by this relation, okay? Uh, and where this GP, GP was the uh, compression modulus and uh, okay, so now it has a tag P, now it's a function of P. So for zeroth mode, this quantity is zero. So for zeroth mode, you don't have this quantity. It's a simple Brownian motion. Uh, basically as you would model a single particle. <clears throat> now what we do, we improvise the Rouse model to account for the crowded diffusion in complex liquids, uh, where we take this dp again as a stochastic function in time. Now what is a crowded environment? Now crowded environment that I'll be, uh, I'm concerned with is a crowded environment in polygon hills. Now these circles of which the red circles uh, represents the low mobility region, slow moving particles and this orange circles they represent high mobility. Uh, fast moving particles. Now, what happens at a particular instance? This high and low they fluctuate throughout the sample in times. So times less than tau rouse. Tau rouse is the maximum relaxation time of a an entangled polymer uh, where the intermolecular uh, interactions relax. This is the characteristic time scale of a, uh, of polymers. Okay, uh, and this high and low limit they fluctuate throughout the sample in times uh, time intervals less than tau rouse. And it's also something called the dynamic oxygen. So we account for this crowded environment. Okay. So these uh, circles now represent uh, a chain. So we take a, so basically what we're doing, we model this crowd, crowded environment uh, in terms of this Rouse modes. So for that, what we do, we define and characterize the crowded environment by diffusion. Uh, by crowded in, uh, uh, by we characterize the crowded environment by 
the, the or in terms of moves, the in terms of moves, and that moves are time dependent. Stochastic. Now, what are the consequences of the Gaussian? First is the anomalous diffusion. The second is a non-Gaussian distribution of displacements. Anomalous diffusion is known in uh, in uh, polymer polymeric liquids. So we observe subdiffusive center of mass and monomer dynamics in polymer liquids at times less than the longest relaxation time. Okay, so anomalous diffusion where the MST of the particle varies with time as t raised to the power mu, the exponent is not equal to one, mu equal to one for Brownian diffusion. Now, uh, non-Gaussian distribution. So distribution which is not Gaussian. So this is from our uh, uh, from our work, here you see uh, these points are the data points. Okay, the dashed line is the Gaussian fit, the closest Gaussian fit to these data points, and the derived equation is the uh, is again Gaussian, and it was derived by assuming intramolecular potentials to be common. Okay, and that turns out to be Gaussian, which is basically what we did. We derived the self part of the monomer Vanoff distribution. Function. So, uh, so this is the uh, uh, this is how the so the time that we have taken where the times is much much less than the crowded. So we develop an exact theory based on Rouse model where we model the crowded environment by diffusing diffusivity. What is a diffusing diffusivity? Is a is a term that was coined by Chudinsky and Slater to uh, uh, where it models the particle diffusion coefficient uh, as a stochastic processing. But this was done for only single particle diffusion. Now, what are the first principle theories uh, for polymer liquids? One is by the generalized Langevin equation approach. Uh, so, Schweitzer did the pioneering work on this. He derived the equation of motion uh, uh, of monomer from complete phase space of polymer and solvent and projecting out the uh, fast dynamics of the Solvent onto the relevant slow variables of the polymer. What Gwenza did, Gwenza generalized his treatment and identified the slow or the relevant variables to be the uh, variables that span the RG or the radius of gyration of the uh, polymer. So, uh, you know, but again, it is not exact. Uh, they did huge approximations on determining the memory functions. Okay, that come out from the projector operator techniques. Gilgis found out, provides an alternate to the projection operator formalism. So he writes a linear Langevin equation, which contains the influence of polymers uh, that is interacting with the tag polymer, their equilibrium uh, properties of the surrounding polymers. Then he figures out a way to solve within the path integral formalism. Uh, again, that is not exact, uh, but uh, yeah, but there are celebrated theories. So. Underlying complexities in these above techniques which excludes any exact treatment. Okay, so what we do, we assume the crowded environment to be more resolved. That is one assumption in a post-trained model of polymer, which entails, and this, this assumption allows an exact treatment. And this is in contrast to both coupling theories underlying the projection, uh, which uh, has the proje inherent projection operator methods that models the coupling of the surrounding environment to the tagged polymer. Now, what is our path? Uh, uh, how we uh, uh, ended up doing this problem? We had the single particle diffusion in crowded fluid systems, where this is a schematic picture of an experiment done from the steep mechanic pool, where it's a schematic illustration of a small fluorescent probe particles diffusing in the large matrix molecule. They found a Fikian, that means. Uh, uh, Fikian is uh, the MSD goes as T, it's Brownian, yet the distribution is uh, distribution of displacements is not Gaussian. Now, to explain this kind of phenomena, uh, Chubinsky came out with the diffusing diffusivity concept, where the diffusion coefficient for single particle diffusivity fluctuates in time and then writes the evolution equation for the distribution of this. Single particle diffusivity. Jain and Sebastian, they were the first to uh, implement this analytically by 
modeling by a dual stochastic process. So first stochastic process is for the position coordinate or the single pa uh, particle coordinate, which is a Brownian, and the other for the diffusion coefficient, which the model as the Einstein Beck process. It's a much more generalized Brownian process with a potential of mean phase. Okay, then came, uh, but contained complicated phase phase particle techniques. Chechkin came out with a bivariant for Copland equation distributions. And then Tiagi et al. They generalized, they simplified these two approaches. And our approach is more or less, um, uh, uh, for, um, we generalize this to many particle system and more or less uh, goes by this simplified approach of Tiagi and Chua. Okay. So, what we did, we implicitly allow the polymer diffusivity, okay, in terms of Rouse mode diffusivities and oh, which fluctuates in time. So implicitly, we express the polymer diffusivity in, uh, as a function of tau, okay, and time, thus modeling the uh, crowded environment. So this is a schematic of a Rouse polymer in the crowded environment. Now. More, diffu more diffusivity as a stochastic process. So our first stochastic process was the Rouse uh, original Rouse dynamics where the chain of connected was the perform the Brownian motion. The second stochastic proce uh, process in the dual uh, stochastic process technique, we, uh, we model the each of the more diffusivities. Now you see dp is just a function of time and we model that uh, as a square of the MP dimensional einstein Beck process. Okay, in this way. Uh, now, why we take NP dimensional, uh, not a si single dimension? So these are the reasons. Now you see, this is a generic brown uh, Brownian motion doesn't have this term. We have this potential mean term now. Standard weight process is we get P is the strength of the potential mean force, which accounts for both intra and intermolecular interactions. NP NP is a, uh, a it increases the coupling of the Rouse chain to the crowded environment. So it gives a handle to increase or decrease the coupling of the, um, this coupling with the crowded environment. And DP, it models the amplitude of the fluctuating random environment. Okay, so this is a delta function correlated noise. Uh, uh, so uh, now the distribution, now once we have the stochastic equation, then we talk about the distribution. Now distribution is given as a function which we uh, just discussed. Um, now this NC, it, it is given in this form, okay? Uh, NC is the normalization constant. And again, this is a, uh, this normalization constant ensures that the probability of displacements that we get after using these uh, is normalized. So the probability of the NP dimensional YP trajectory is the product of all this this kind of single mode, uh, uh, this single uh, one-dimensional constant Weinberg processes. Okay, so that is a symmetry of the problem that we have. Now, how do we proceed to solve for the distribution of mode displacements delta xp in time? So delta xp is the mode uh, is the displacement of the pth mode in time. So uh, we write the Fokker-Planck equation for delta xp. Uh, then the evolution ex uh, equation for p delta xp, which is which is nothing but uh, it is a function of yp, it's basically a conditional probability. So since it's a conditional probability, the distribution of the pst averaged over dpt is looks like this. Okay, so this p bar is the distribution averaged over the mode resolved crowded environment. Now the distribution of delta x zero or cm uh, or the center of mass uh, is uh, uh, that is the p equal to zero mode. It turns out to be uh, to be this, where this guy is solved numerically. But then you can express in terms of a Fourier transform. The Fourier transform is dimensionless. Uh, so that is again another symmetry of the problem, and uh, uh, it uh, looks something like this. P equal to z. Uh, this solution is familiar. This is uh, exactly similar to the single particle diffusion results which were derived by original three groups. 
the probability distribution of displacements okay so distribution of delta xp that we equal to one two, and so on uh, for yet more dis, uh, displacements we found we find it based from analytic solutions again this is expressed it can be expressed in terms of dimension Fourier uh, transform dimensionless Fourier transform and uh, this is a gamma function and this is a confluent hypergeometric functions and these are all uh, uh, half integers okay <coughs> and it looks something like this one can look at our paper probability distribution of average bit displacements again can be expressed as a product of modes okay in this fashion so it's uh, average bit displacements means the bit uh, 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 we average out the tau dependence. Okay, it's averaged. It's a chain averaged bit displacement. Uh, so uh, again, it can be expressed in terms of uh, the Fourier transform. And here, uh, the Fourier variable is k, and here it is u. Now, once we have the displacements derived, okay, uh, in terms of Fourier transform, it uses the uh, calculation of the moments of displacements. So the two theta -th order, the even order moments of all the displacements can be obtained from the Fourier transform itself by this uh, by this standard formula. Okay, uh, as we uh, this is a this is a dimensionless one derived by this standard formula. Uh, moments of from this the moments of center of mass uh, can be derived, and you see this is the Brownian result in terms of d naught and then you average over the diffusivity in this way so uh, d0 is by 0 squared in this t term you consider it as an integral of okay and uh, this is for 1d displacements so for 3d it looks like this similarly the fourth order uh, derivative can be derived from the uh, from the uh, one dimensional results by multiplying by five and so on. Now, moments of p equal to one, two, and higher mode displacements can be derived uh, similarly. Uh, this is our analytic result. Uh, and uh, uh, these are all the mode resolve parameters. Now, you see, these all results come uh, very nicely uh, from the Fourier, uh, from Fourier transforms. The moments of row speeds, uh, this is the second order moment of the row speed FST, uh, and this is the fourth order. So, as the uh, higher, uh, uh, higher the moment, the complexity increases. Now, we come to the results. So, we express our uh, the results in terms of dimensionless parameters. So, this is the our zeroth mode displacements are non or has a strong non Gaussian character. So strong non-Gaussian behavior is found at small t naught and in zero. Uh, some of these results were uh, found by Jane Sebastian. So t zero is a dimensionless. So uh, these are all dimensionless variables that you see here. Okay, and this is the one D and this is the three D uh, distribution. Similarly, the the modes be uh, greater than zero modes. Okay, they also have strong. Uh, Gaussian behavior. So it, it is a function of TP, XP, uh, a function of another very another length factor, LP, okay, uh, which looks something like this. And uh, and these uh, this is a Fourier transform variable is also uh, uh, taken to be dimensionless, NP, and also the mode number P. Okay, so strong non Gaussian behavior is found at small p square by LP. T, P, and N, P, similar to T naught and N naught. And P greater than uh, zero mode displacement will be collapsed to a single curve at fixed P square by L, P. Okay. Now, we also get a, a non Gaussian distribution of delta RT. Now, delta RT is in terms of modes. Okay. So, uh, so the distributions, they converge in the first 10 modes. Uh, MSD con uh, the, and the rate of convergence is very good, uh, converges to 95.7% of the well converged result uh, until first four modes and 98.5% within the first 11 modes. So, P0, uh, zeroth mode contribution is about 82%. Okay, so 
these are uh, these are the values of these parameters this is the first four nodes okay uh, so we have taken uh, minimal distinct parameters as you see and we also in investigated this investigation uh, forms important in mathematical terms if we had any since uh, our results for delta rt and the zeroth node is uh, numerical um, it, it is only uh, solved numerically so additional parallel exponent uh, in the exponential uh, has to be determined numerically so what we do we plot this versus this okay um, so these blue curves are for the zero uh, green curves are for the um, other for all other modes other than the zero and this is for the average blue. black curves are for the average person and this all these curves seem to have the similar trends the exponent values turns out to be 1 to 1.5 so these are these c and d or the uh, this b and d they are obtained from the difference curves of this which gives the exponent value itself okay now what is the scope so our theory has a scope in explaining the anomalous diffusion when compared to polymer mills data and the data we obtain from other research groups of uh, Magrantas and Best. Uh, so here uh, we find that our equal to zero theory is adequate in explaining the melt average data uh, as is, and we could retrieve the uh, anomalous diffusion uh, of center of mass and volume for times t less than tau hours. Okay. Uh, our results reproduce the non Gaussian distribution, this distribution are all non Gaussian. Okay, and you have a different set of parameters as you see. Uh, this inset is the center of mass curve, and this is the monomer curve. Um, and uh, center of mass and monomer they are implicit. Now, how could you? How could we derive the uh, retrieve the anomalous diffusion? It's because n zero, v zero, omega zero they are implicit functions of t and degree of polymerization. So far, our theory allows this analysis. Numerically, okay. So analyzing this numerically, we could retrieve the uh, anomalous diffusion. Now predictions from our theory. Already we showed that the MST uh, scaling rela uh, scaling relations of MST with time could be derived. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, the crux of this uh, lies in the uh, derivation of the scaling relations for the diffusion coefficients of center of mass and monomer in case the p is equal to zero to mod is the uh, the models the monomer dynamics sufficiently. Also, the scaling relations of the diffusion position can be found with respect to the degree of polymerization S. Now, our P delta RT in terms of modes explain the monomer dynamics where P equal to zero theory appears inadequate. So, all, uh, as we have shown, it's always possible to uh, express our theory in minimal set of parameters by keeping per mode uh, parameters constant. As p equal to zero is, uh, has this dominant contribution so far, we have seen uh, this uh, forms are unpublished results. Uh, measured quantities from experiments, measurable quantities like relaxation modulus, viscosity, steady state compliance are known to be expressed in terms of these modes, and uh, they can be obtained from our theory. Uh, um, so, once these quantities can be obtained from our theory, the relaxation time, situation relaxation time is obtained from the long distance correlation function. And segment relaxation time from the study of the relaxation modulus. So they can also be predicted. <coughs> so, in summary, we generalize the diffusing diffusivity, a single particle concept to many particle system with localized interaction. That is a chain of connected bits, maybe the Rouse model in an exact calculation. Uh, Rouse model in crowded environment, modeled by diffusing, diffusing diffusivity, involves expressing the dynamics in terms of independent. Normal Rouse modes with no diffusivity is modeled as squares of the independent stochastic process. The resulting final diffusion behavior that we get is a function of more result. Implementation of diffusing diffusivity to Rouse modes is one Gaussian diffusion. That's one of the important points. And there's a possibility of explaining anomalous center of mass and normal diffusion, also uh, determining many of the measurable experimental properties. Uh, like relaxation times and other physical properties of the system. In comparison to exact 
that if the existing non exact first principle theory is exacted, then our formalism is not possible by assumption of uh, decoupled components. Of a much post gain model of polymers applicable for dilute solutions with localized interactions and diffusing diffusing. Nevertheless, our formalism has scope in applying to polymer liquids. So, acknowledgement my research group, I present part of this thesis, uh, CRB uh, for a grant, IIT Rupi for giving me the opportunity to do research, my department, uh, faculty colleagues for all the preparation, and department of. Uh, chemistry for the infrastructure. Well, thank you all for the patient here. So, thank you, Pallavi. So, we had a very informative talk by Professor Devnath. And now it is open for questions. So, please go ahead with your questions. Please, with your questions, any questions from the audience? I had some anno annotation requests during the talk. So maybe that can be given by somebody in this discourse, I guess. If there are no questions, we can assume that means that that uh, was self-explanatory and everything was explained very clearly. If no questions, can shall we conclude the session? Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Devnath, for such an informative talk. Thank you, ma'am.